Welcome to how to create the perfect do-it-yourself homework space. That is our topic for today. My name is Jody Rodriguez, and I am one of the Scholastic Parents Razor Reader bloggers. And I'm excited to be here with you today to talk about making the best opportunity that we can for our kids to get their homework done each day. I am a former teacher, um, reading specialist, and administrator, and I also have two elementary students of my own, two boys, a kindergartner and a first grader. So I have lots of ideas to share with you today. We're going to talk about three different areas. We're going to talk about getting a sense of what your child's needs are and setting up a homework space that will meet their needs. We're going to look at some different homework station options that you can set up in your house, whether you have a lot of space or just a tight little space. And then we're going to look at some do-it-yourself materials that you can provide your kids using things that you probably already have around your house. So. Are you ready to get started with me? Now, as we go through our chat today, please feel free to leave questions and comments below. You can type them below and we will try to answer as many as we can, okay? So we all know that from the time when the school bell rings at the end of the day to bedtime, that's just a couple of hours and there's lots of things to get done during that time. First, there's the commute home, whether it's just a short walk or maybe a school bus ride or a long car ride home. Then there's prepping dinner, making dinner, eating dinner. There's getting ready for bed, which involves brushing teeth, shower, all of those things. And then there's also getting everyone's homework done. So that's a lot of stuff to get in during a short amount of time. So we're going to try and make things easier for you right now by talking about some homework, um, things that we can do, stations and ideas that we can do to help kids get that part of our day done. Okay, so tell me right now, what is your biggest challenge when it comes to kids and homework? Go ahead and type it in the comments below for us. I have a feeling that some of us will probably have the same struggles that you're having too. All right, we are going to start with first figuring out that just right um, space for your kids based on their needs. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about timing. I want you to think about when you or your spouse or your significant other comes home from work. Is the first thing that you do or that they do is sit down and do some more work um, from their day? Probably not. Chances are you want to get out of your clothes and change into something more comfortable, grab a snack out of the refrigerator, chat with family, maybe call a friend, go outside for a little fresh air. Those are all things that kind of help us unwind and move on to the next part of our day, even if we've brought work home with us that we need to get done. And our kids are the same way. Our kids need a little bit of downtime when they come home, whether it's changing clothes and grabbing a snack, running around outside for a little bit. I've found that if we give them that little bit of downtime before they dive into their homework, they have much more focus and their attention is better and they can get their work done quicker. So we're going to talk about needs, but I just wanted to put in that little timing piece because it's a really important little thing that sometimes gets overlooked that can really help with focus during homework. Okay, so let's talk about your child's needs. Think about how your child learns best. Some kids think about their space that they need. Some kids prefer to work in a nice straight back chair at a table. Some kids prefer to work better laying on their tummies on the floor or hanging out on the couch or a beanbag chair. So as you're thinking about where you want to set up a homework station for your kids to get their homework done, think about where in your house is it the best fit for them. And for some kids, this can change on a daily basis, depending maybe on the day that they've had at school. If they've had a day that's been filled with lots of extra activities, maybe a field trip or something like that, they might want a more quiet, structured place. Um, so you have to think about your kids. And you might have kids that have different needs, and that's okay, too. We're going to talk about that. Think about um, the noise level. So some kids need quiet to work. And some kids prefer to have some noise in the background. One of my boys prefers to listen to audiobooks when he is working. 
and my other son prefers to have music going while he's working. And then there might be other kids who prefer to have it perfectly quiet. So you have to think about those needs also when you're setting up where you want to have your homework station. Okay. So once you have figured all of that out and you've thought about where they learn best and where would be the most logical place for them to get their homework done, now we can start thinking about, okay, what do we put in those homework stations? So I have three different ideas for you, and this is kind of part two for us. And we're going to talk about three different ideas. The first one is a standalone desk or table. The second one is a rollout station. And the third one is a hanging door station. So some of these are going to work if you have bigger spaces, and then some of these are going to work if you have tight spaces. So let's start with the standalone desk or table option. Again, if you have a child that prefers quiet, maybe a table in their room or a desk in their bedroom would work well. If you have kids who are going to need a lot of attention during their homework time and help from you, maybe while you're prepping dinner, then maybe the kitchen table might work best. So think about the areas and your child's needs of where they are going to be able to focus the most. And again, this is going to vary from child to child, probably even in your own family. So at a standalone station at a desk, um, all you need really is you want a container of some sort, such as just a little container like this, that's going to hold your supplies. We all know that kids forget to bring home everything that they need to do their homework. Many times we're lucky if they remember their homework folder with their homework in it. So having supplies at home that contain things like pencils and markers and scissors and glue at home in a little container is perfect because then they're not, oh, I forgot that, and we're not fussing at them because they forgot things that they needed to do their homework. So having a little separate homework container, and it can be a very small little container like this that you just pick up at the dollar store. Something else that works really well is one of the Lazy Susans that I have one that I have my spices on so I can roll it and that can sit in the middle of the table and you can put different containers um, such as like little cups like this on it with the supplies in it and that way if you have multiple students who are working then they can twirl it around to, uh, to get what they need. So that works well for a standalone station. If it's a, a station like the kitchen table, which is also has to be used for dinner, a little container like this is great because you can pick it up and then just put it into a drawer and pull it out at homework time. So caddies are a great idea for those standalone stations. Or these little ones are really nice too if you have kids who want to work at a desk in their bedroom. Each child can have a little caddy with all of the things that they need right there in it. Okay, so that's a standalone desk or table station. Our second idea is a rollout station. Um, so I have a kind of a miniature one here I'm going to show you because I can't hold up a big rollout station. But those rollout stations are simply these plastic containers. So they're usually about six drawers and they come up about, oh, about three feet high and they have wheels on the bottom of them. Now, logistically, <laughs> I can't pick it up and show it to you. So we're going to just imagine here that this one's a little bit taller and it has the wheels on it. So the same kind of concept. In each of the drawers, you're going to put different supplies that you need. So in one drawer, you might have your crayons, pencils, markers. Another drawer might have things like your glue and your scissors. This is also the perfect size for um, different kinds of paper that they need, like the loose leaf paper, maybe construction paper, all of the supplies in here. Now here's the cool thing about the rolling caddy, is it rolls. So if your child one day wants to work in the living room on the floor, they can roll the caddy right in there. If your child is working at the kitchen table, they can roll it right to wherever they're working. And the best part is, is when it's not being used, you can roll it right into the closet. So we keep ours in our coat closet. So that bottom part, the coats don't come all the way down and the bottom part is empty, so our caddy just slides right in there and then it's out of the way and we just pull it out when we have homework or if the kids are feeling crafty or wanna write notes to Santa or what have you, they can go and all of our supplies are right there. So I really like the rollout caddy idea. 
It is one that we use. Um, you can pick them up. I mean, they pretty much sell them anywhere, any major department store or wholesale club or places like that. Um, I must admit that I probably have three or four <laughs> floating around in, in our house. So that's the rollout caddy. Now, if you are tight on space, I have another option because some of us don't have the space for a standalone station or even the rollout caddy, which can be a little bit bulky. So the tight space solution is to use a shoe rack. So these are the just the little plastic shoe racks that can hang on the back of a door. So it can hang on the back of your children's bedroom door, or we have one on the back of our closet door. It's nice and out of way. You can close the door and it's gone. But for homework, it has all these great little pockets to put all of the supplies that you need. So one can hold your scissors, container to hold the glue, all sorts of things. In fact, there are so many little pockets here <laughs> that I even store extra art supplies. So maybe not things that necessarily the kids need to do their homework, but it almost becomes a homework slash art organizer for us. So everything can just go in that caddy. And then if you have little ones, you can put the things that we don't want them to get, like pointy scissors and things up in the higher pockets. So a really in inexpensive little shoe caddy works great on um, the back of a door. So if you live in a small apartment or a small home and you are really tight on space, hanging one of these on the back of a closet door is a great idea. Okay, so we talked about three different organizational station ideas. We talked about the standalone desk, just using just a little caddy, such as that, or a basket would even work, especially if you just got little cups and you could just use um, paper cups or Dixie type cups, the bigger ones, to sort your supplies and something like that. We talked about the roller caddy with the wheels that you can roll right into the closet, or if you're tight on space, you can do the shoe rack. So let me check here for a second and see if we have any questions so far. Let's see. We have any? So some of the issues people are having is that the younger child finishes their home or their homework quickly, and then the older older kids get um, have trouble focusing. And yes, that is a very common um, problem that I think a lot of us have. One of the ideas for that is to after the younger kids get done, is for them that they can then do like a quiet box activity, or listen to a story online. Um, or listen to um, an audio book, um, or even just get books and go in the other room. Or if you have an older sibling who maybe has gotten done with their work, but not all the other kids, they could go and read to them. So they're kind of doing a quieter activity. I also, it's a time where I like to pull out some Play-Doh and move them to another table and they can play quietly with Play-Doh, preferably out of eyesight of the older kids who are still trying to focus on their work. So that's a couple ideas um, for you, Catherine. Um, Kathy says she has struggles with writing neatly and taking his time and he rushes to finish. Kathy, I think one of the things is that taking that break, sometimes if we give the kids a little break before we ask them to do more work, then they can focus a little bit better and get it done. But yes, the kids usually are looking forward to doing something afterwards. Um, so giving them that little break beforehand a lot of times will help. So I hope that helps. Um, Johanna says distractions, and Johanna, I hope that when we talked about the sensory needs that I answered that question for you a little bit, and, and I hope that that helped you. So if you have a child who's easily distracted, doing homework at the kitchen table when the dog's running through and you're prepping dinner probably isn't the best location, so maybe a quieter space like their bedroom could be a good spot. Um, and Andrea also said distractions. Um, Jenna says time. Yes, time, is, I think, is a struggle for all of us. One of the things that I'll say about time, Jenna, is that um, 
most schools try to follow that whatever grade you're in that's about 10 minutes per homework so first grade about 10 minutes second grade about 20 minutes third grade about 30 minutes so if you find that homework is taking longer than that time talk with your child's teacher um, and discuss that because most schools try to shoot for that amount of homework so if for some reason it's taking much longer talk with your child's teacher and see if maybe the work can be modified or your teacher might have some suggestions your child's teacher might have some suggestions Questions. Okay, I think that has the questions that we have so far. Okay, so let's talk now about some materials that you can have at home to help your child do their homework. So very often kids are sent home with some type of worksheet or reading or something to do, but they're not sent home with the manipulatives um, that they can use with their hands that they would often have at school. So a lot of times at school when kids are doing math sheets, they might have counters that they can use to do um, their math project. Or if they're practicing their spelling words, there's probably opportunities for manipulative letters to move around or dry erase boards or things to write on. But there isn't a class set that teachers can send home with kids to do their homework at home. So there are some things that we can do at home um, using materials that we probably have on hand already to help kids with homework. Okay, so the first thing, let's talk about spelling words. So a few ideas for spelling words when your kids have to come home and practice those, which is pretty common, I think, for most of us to get ready for that test each week. Um, I like to use just a little pencil box, a plastic pencil box, empty one, and then inside, this is going to be hard for me to tilt up on camera here with it all sliding, Inside, you want to put, this happens to be yellow cornmeal, salt works well, sugar, but if you have um, little sticky hands, the sugar is going to stick. So probably cornmeal or flour or salt would be best. And this just becomes a little sensory writing tray to practice your spelling words. So because I have it tilted up, it's not going to work great for me here on camera. But say they're practicing um, the word so, they could just with their finger write it into the cornmeal. So this becomes a sensory experience to help with um, practicing spelling words or sight words. Okay, so that's one idea. Another idea for spelling words or vocabulary words or any type of writing if it's a handwriting assignment um, where they just have to practice a particular letter is a dry erase board and these are pretty common in classrooms but you can get them as a parent pretty inexpensively too so you can actually buy a whiteboard just at a dollar store I happened to be at a dollar store yesterday and they had lots of them and buy dry erase markers if you don't have one of these, you could also go to the hardware store and ask for a piece of shower board, and they usually will even cut it for you into small sections. You can use that. You can also use your window, your window in the kitchen. Now, do you want to test it out a little bit, and you don't want to leave the dry erase marker on very long. You want to be wipe it off pretty quickly, but a window or a mirror also works, and they can practice writing their words. I have multiple colors of dry erase markers, so sometimes if they're practicing a spelling word, I might say, write it in each corner in a different color. So there they've got practice of writing it four different times, but they thought it was so fun because they were writing it in four different colors, they didn't even realize how tedious it was to write it four times. They were having more fun just picking out a different color to use. So dry erase boards are, are very handy because you can also use them um, to practice math too, or if your child is stuck on a problem and you need to provide some support, this is a great little tool that you can come in and model how to do something for them and they can practice next to you and then go write it on their, their homework sheet. So we use these dry erase boards a lot. The other thing that you can do with a dry erase is to buy a plastic sleeve like this and these you can also find at the dollar store. And this is has an opening where you can just slide in a blank piece of paper and um, or you can print something like here I printed a tic-tac-toe board and then they could write you could even play tic-tac-toe with spelling words so I'm gonna be tank and my son's gonna be um, sink and so every time I have a turd I'm gonna write tank every time that he has a turn he's gonna write sink and again more to practice spelling words so these sh plastic sheets to slide in work as great little dry erase boards too. 
Okay, and as we're, go, as we're going along and I'm sharing ideas and I know it's a lot to keep track of, please keep in mind that this video is going to be available on the Scholastic Parents Facebook page and also at scholastic.com slash parents. So if you're having a hard time remembering all of this, know that it is going to be available after we're done too. Okay, so those were the dry erase ones. Also, another tool that I like to have on hand is our kitchen timer. And it can just be a little just regular kitchen timer that you use, um, or you can buy a fancier one that has different colors, um, and it flashes. Because some kids kind of need that motivation of knowing, okay, you've got 15 minutes to get your work done, let's buckle down and let's focus. Um, some kids also just like to keep track of like, how fast can I get my homework done today? And so they just wanna keep track of the time. The timer works really well if part of your child's homework is to read for a certain number of minutes, then the timer comes in handy because they can keep track of their time. So I like to have a timer on hand. Or you can, I often use the kitchen timer on our uh, stove too, to track time. All right, another do it yourself. Thing that I have here is just a simple straw. Now this straw can work when we were talking about our little tray back here, our little sensory tray. If your child doesn't actually like using their finger in the sensory tray, they could use the straw to draw the letters and the words in too. The other thing, great thing about straws is that you can cut them just into little chunks and use them in little pieces like this and now they become great counters for your kids math work whether they're doing addition or subtraction or grouping or regrouping um, little pieces of the straw work well or if you have multiple colors of straws and their assignment is to work on patterning now you have a manip manipulative for that so really inexpensive material that they can use to help them with that part of their homework Okay, uh, Kathy says that Alexa keeps a timer too. So yes, asking your phone, aren't our phones great for all those sorts of things too? You can set the timer on that too. That's a great idea. Also, if you have a game like Bananagrams at home or Scrabble, using the letter tiles that come inside of there are also work really well for your kids when they're trying to study their spelling words and they can build their spelling words with the tiles from games that you already have. All right. All right, let's check and see if, if there were any more questions that you have. Please feel free to leave your questions below in your comments. We'll try to get to um, the ones that we can today. If not, I will come back and try to answer them too if we can't do it live right now. And doesn't look like we have any more questions. So let me just review kind of the things that we talked about. So we talked about first, making sure we give our kids a little bit of break before we move into homework time. Second, thinking about the needs of your child, whether they need a quiet space to work or if they need and perform better if there's a little more action going on around. And then we talked about different kinds of homework stations that you can set up, whether it's just a independent at the table or desk station and having a little caddy of supplies available. We talked about having a rolling cart that you can roll from room to room and then store in the closet. Or if you're really tight on space using a a shoe rack or a shoe um, container on the back of a closet door or a bedroom door works really well. And then we shared lots of do-it-yourself ideas. And these are all the sorts of learning and literacy ideas that we share on the Razor Reader um, blog at parents or at scholastic parents, excuse me, dot com forward slash parents. So join us over there too because we always have wonderful ideas that we're sharing to help your kids learn and grow their literacy skills. So I thank you so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Jody Rodriguez and I am one of the Razor Reader bloggers at Scholastic Parents and I look forward to sharing more ideas with you. So thank you, and we'll talk next time. Bye.